We are now going for the last presentation um, entitled the Distributed Energy Resources and Electric Vehicle Charging Stations Expansion Planning for Grid Connected Microgrids by João Soares. No, okay, thank you. So good afternoon again. Uh, this is uh, another work of uh, distribution system planning, but in this case is uh, more for uh, microgrids, so grid connected microgrids, which is a smaller uh, distribution system, uh, usually a neighborhood or uh, buildings, uh, a set of buildings like a condominium or a campus. So that's uh, what uh, a grid connected microgrid will be. The work uh, is a collaboration with São Paulo State University, UNESP. Uh, in this case, the campus of Ilha Solteira, uh, the electrical engineering uh, part department. Uh, and uh, the work was, uh, uh, was uh, from one of our PhD students that has finished in September, Diane. Uh, she spent uh, one year abroad in the Polytechnic of Porto and uh, I was uh, supervising uh, together with John uh, Freddy Franco uh, this work. So she basically worked on the placement of EV charging stations. In the problem I showed you before the launch didn't include the, the placement of EV charging stations, but in this case uh, we have the displacement. So um, why we worry about uh, also planning for grid connected microgrids? is because they will bring us uh, economic benefits for the, the distribution system operators. They can, uh, again, uh, defer investments and they can, uh, uh, overall, the, we can achieve some economic benefits by doing so. Um, and we can integrate uh, distributed energy resource and renewable energy in a more effective way. So this is one of the, the economic benefits and clean energy integration. And also, obviously, I had this discussion with Bo just a few minutes ago about uh, energy security. So if we are able to have uh, several microgrids that can uh, control and accommodate uh, uh, renewable and storage and uh, can do it in an effective way, so our, our, we can have uh, more security of, of, of supply and our grids can become more resilient as well. Uh, sorry, <laughs> there was a small mistake here. Okay, so uh, this model um, is a deterministic uh, optimization with stochastic uh, stochastic optimization because it considers uh, some uncertainty on the problem uh, and we have we are planning for uh, these grid connected mic microgrids to decide where to install the AV charging stations uh, and some uh, theirs and we are formulating it through uh, AC power flow uh, so um, our theirs are PV units and wind turbines, and also we consider energy storage uh, systems. Um, the problem is similar. Uh, so we have one, one side investment cost, how much I am paying uh, now in the year zero, uh, to, uh, and then how much this investment uh, will change our operational cost through the time horizon. In this case of this problem is 10 years. In the previous problems was uh, larger, was 30 years, but here it's 10 years. And there is a difference here is because uh, here we have a multi-stage in investment. So we can do it not only in the year zero, but also in year five. All right. And then the, the project lifetime is 10 years. The investment cost here is, is uh, how much I will pay for the, um, the charging station. <laughs> So uh, if I install one, two, uh, how much I will pay for my PV units and wind turbines and uh, the energy storage systems, which is also a, a large cost. Obviously, depending on the, on the, invest, on the um, decisions I make here, this will affect the operational costs, uh, the operation and maintenance of uh, distributed uh, of the PV units and the wind turbines. Uh, if I will have any load curtailed, 
all right? If uh, some loads will be curtailed, they have to be paid for not being supplied. So it's the principle of power quality uh, that uh, we have in every European country, at least. And uh, um, obviously, if it is a grid connected microgrid, we have the cost uh, to weigh uh, the power from the hub stream or the main grid. So there is this, uh, it could be another microgrid. It could be uh, an exchange of power between this microgrid and another. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, the cost of exchange uh, between this microgrid and another. And then the problem is subject to uh, the normal operational limits of the grid, uh, Kirchhoff laws and so on. Uh, and uh, our distributed energy resource model for PV and wind turbine, the electric vehicle charging station uh, and the environment, environmental constraints. Um, the work, uh, in fact, departed from a previous publication that uh, I, uh, Tayen did uh, in 2022 while she was doing uh, she uh, part of her visiting uh, program of the PG in our lab uh, and we took this model uh, for uh, determining the demand from this work previous work and we used it here so then this model is transformed by approximation linear approximation into a MILP from is a mixed into, original is an AC, as an AC power flow a full AC power flow, but it's transformed to a, a linear power flow uh, to make it more computationally tractable. Otherwise, uh, it uh, wouldn't uh, run with conventional resource in, uh, in the laptop or uh, workstation. So after we solve it uh, in, in, in Ample, um, it's a, a optimization interface for several solvers like CPLEX and so on, uh, where you can uh, program your optimization model. And then we will have our investment decisions. Where are the locations of theirs and where are the location of charging stations? Obviously, this uh, we already discussed that. It can, we are deciding by someone that will be the investor, but you can look at these investment decisions as uh, the best choice, let's say. And then you can launch a tender for and where the possible investors will have more benefits if they choose these locations if they prefer other locations for example they have to pay more for the um, the license uh, fee or something they have to pay to the dso to install all right so this will be like maybe it's not the dso making the investment but at least they know um, dso knows from the grid perspective where the investors can should make the, the, the installations so that in benefit of the grid and all of these uh, societal uh, benefits. So um, we uh, tried this model in the uh, 69 bus medium voltage distribution grid where we apply this optimization model. Okay. We test different cases. Uh, one case where, we, where our microgrid is isolated from the microgrid, from the other uh, external suppliers and other grid. So it's basically just surviving with the own renewable generation and the storage that uh, it has. And then we have a case study, uh, uh, another case where we have a grid connected microgrid, but we don't allow the model to uh, place energy storage systems, so we don't have the batteries, okay? Obviously, without the batteries, we don't have this buffer to um, uh, accumulate the surplus and so on. In case three, is the same, but uh, we are we have the batteries. Okay, we have the possibility to invest in the batteries and maybe the possibility to reduce operational costs. And then and then we do just a sensitivity analysis in case four. I won't concentrate much. I just prefer that uh, we compare. So and then uh, as I said, the time horizon is ten years, and we make uh, two investments: one in year zero now and then in five years if the model believes it is interesting to make more investments to make uh, maybe buy one more wind turbine or another energy storage system uh, and here is a summary for all these three cases okay uh, where you see the investment costs for case one two and three uh, the case one is where we uh, don't allow for energy store, uh, sorry, where it is uh, isolated, 
uh, and then you have an investment of 34 million uh, dollars uh, and an operational cost of 15 million dollars okay uh, but we don't have uh, costs with exchange with external grid because it is uh, oper operated in Icelandic mode the problem is that you will pay uh, a large amount of uh, non-supplied uh, load that's 13 million because there is a lot of load that cannot be fulfilled as uh, in some periods of the day we don't have enough renewable and uh, to even with the batteries even if we uh, invest a lot of money in the batteries here three million uh, almost four we cannot uh, su uh, suffice or uh, to satisfy i mean uh, this demand in case two we uh, we allow to buy energy from the external suppliers all right and that is a is a bill of uh, uh, it is here so it's 80 million 90 million and so on uh, and uh, and but we don't allow to to invest in energy storage systems so we have a total investment of 30 million uh, but we can reduce a lot how much we pay for penalties for not supplying load okay so we reduce from 13 million to around sixty thousand uh, dollars obviously the operational cost reduce reduce here then in the third case the difference is just okay now if we allow to put some energy storage systems what happened so we just invest three hundred thousand in this case uh, the total investment is higher than case two but we can eliminate in this case thankfully we can eliminate the non-supplier the penalties non-supplier load penalties which cost a lot obviously if we have a hospital that is not running it's uh even if they have a cup we have to pay them because they have to we have to fulfill the contract right so we eliminate this penalty uh and our total cost drops from 50 million to uh, 12.8 million to 12.6 million so in this case investing in the energy storage system at least looking at 10 year uh, time horizon is benefic is uh, here we are assuming that the energy storage system lasts at least 10 years right uh, maybe it can last more we hope there are uh, proposals for technologies to last 20 years and even more it is just uh, some visualization of what is going on uh, so in prior one and prior two for case two and case three the difference is that we invest in uh, uh, the energy storage system and here we have different scenarios as i told you we have considering uh, some uh, different scenarios is a, is a stochastic optimization obviously if we have energy storage system we don't as we are accumulating uh, surplus energy we don't need to exchange so much much power uh, with the grid so that's why this head uh, here it, it reduces a bit in some prices and here is the decision in a visualization form so um, in prior the uh, prior one is the first five years and the prior two is, a, is a five years until 10 years uh, here we invest uh, for microgrid uh, two in one wind turbine two pv units and one charging station on bus 46 and then for microgrid three two wind turbines 78 pv panels one electric vehicle charging station and for microgrid one one wind turbine 56 solar and one ev charging station then uh on the on the year five no investment for microgrid two we had two energy storage systems on microgrid three and on microgrid one we don't we don't do investment so only in microgrid two we had two uh, energy storage systems there so basically um this is a model where uh, we had uh, this uh, uh, this uh, situation of uh, having uh, several uh, scenarios for considering um, the microgrid planning and we do different cases to evaluate uh, if energy storage systems can compensate or cannot compensate in this case specific case uh, even at the current price uh, it could compensate by a small uh, margin at least two hundred thousand dollars it's uh, uh it's, it's still uh, um, it's still a, a positive 
uh, and we hope that uh, we can uh, further improve this model by, for example, uh, adding battery degradation model as we are considering uh, energy storage systems. That will be interesting. Considering more complex transactions between uh, the microgrid and other microgrids and the external supplier, that will be nice. Uh, and well, uh, many ideas, maybe you have more if you want to collaborate. I already told you about this special issue that I am uh, uh, running with Bruno and Zita and other colleagues uh, in France and uh, so in the United States. You also saw my C, uh, I also show you my biography, my contact is here. And uh, that's it, uh, basically. Feel free to come to Porto. Thank you, João. Questions? Thank you. Um, I was wondering when you talk about uh, investments mm -hmm. in the current uh, market, um, are there some obvious investors at the moment? And my second question would be what are the, um, could we say, regulatory risk? They are facing if they would go in and then invest in uh, grid storage mm -hmm. yeah thank you for your question so your first question is uh, who are the investors right now who are the investors in a uh, well uh, in a microgrid context even the, um, the residential buildings or the consumers can be uh, uh, in a co in a community context or cooperative context we can be the uh, investors right because if you decide if you have a house if you decide to put uh, a PV panel, you are making an investment, right? So you are being an investor. <laughs> Obviously, uh, when it is a bigger uh, size of microgrid, uh, depending if it is privately owned or not, for example, a campus in university, it can be a private operated microgrid. So the investor there is clear. Yeah, you understand. When it is not, when you are in the, in the condominium of different flats and houses, then it's not so obvious. Obviously, in principle, it's private, but it can be, if you allow it, it can be some company that goes there and installs a, an electric vehicle charging station, right? And they are installing this, you have to pay, but then they are, you have to pay them an operation fee and so on, but everyone agrees. So investors here depends on the context, in my opinion, if you are talking about a privately Regarding your second question, it was about the inventory Risk. risks. Uh, I'm not sure if I fully understand, but uh, if you can elaborate. I mean, when you're going to do the investment, you will do it under the current regulatory scheme. And since uh, there are so many things that are changing at the moment, at least at the EU level, with, with respect to the regulatory framework, so you, there might be something changing that you know somehow would change the business case for your uh, for your investment. I guess for the, I think you mentioned also the grid storage part. I guess that is uh, obviously uh, well, there is different kinds of risks, not only regulatory, but it's also the part if we don't want to affect our market. But the technologies usually uh, investors are all are trusting more in life between basic technologies or redox flow for grid storage. Uh, but the, what I believe is that the, the regulatory framework will be in favor of the investors. And the reason is because if we want to achieve 40, I guess 45% below the inflation target by 2007, this, this value is being increased over the years. And now uh, the only way we can do it uh, is always obviously investing, investing in renewables making this transition, but we cannot do it decoupled from energy storage systems. So, so at something 
many things are happening at the same time. We are increasing electric vehicles that will increase demand, but also uncertainty on how to predict demand and so on. Uh, the grid needs to be reinforced. And then uh, renewable, we need to make have renewable because it does not make sense to have more demand and uh, increase emissions if we don't make it green. The only way we can do it and make the best of our renewables is if we invest in grid, uh, in grid storage, long duration energy storage, or uh, not, not so long duration, like short duration is also needed, so that we can accumulate these situations and obviously make the uh, improve uh, the, the use of you know, So I guess the rules are already given that this exists, but uh, will be lower in the equity, I think, at least in the European Commission. So even the BSO, I guess, will have some flexibility. Uh, they cannot, uh, I mean, they cannot use the uh, energy star system to do arbitrary energy uh, market flow and buy low and sell market like it was a market stock at point. But uh, I guess they will have to use this to accumulate so much of it. But we can achieve our time. This is my vision. I like it. It's, it makes sense. We have a question of Luis. So uh, we have this uh, uh, capital and operation maintenance costs, but we have also some economic payback analysis for the investor. This is one question. Another one is, it seems that uh, it's much cheaper to stay connected with the grid and you can purchase electricity from the grid. But in this case, uh, the, the the first scenario with uh, light batteries it should be applied just for isolated communities where we don't have the grid. In the first uh, case, yes, we, uh, we don't have uh, the grid. Yes, here we don't have the grid, but we have to pay for non supply mode, and that's what uh, uh, makes this case uh, very expensive. But in the grid connected, yes, we can buy energy for the grid and uh, we uh, can satisfy the but operational cost, obviously, will increase uh, a bit. When we put energy storage system, <coughs> we can uh, at least reduce this cost. In this case, in this particular uh, paper, we didn't make this economic analysis to all the internal rate of return, uh, how much payback. Uh, I showed it in the morning. Uh, one planning problem where we did that, and the payback price for that case was three years, which was good. Uh, here, I don't know, but uh, probably we'll do it in a journal paper. Obviously, it's interesting. But usually, uh, there is a positive uh, less than 10 years' time payback. When it is straight three years, it's, it's uh, wonderful. But when it's 30%, it's a lot of. Uh, Usually, interest rates in the bank is 5% or 4 now, so uh, it's some investment that has 30% at all. Uh, but uh, usually, 10 years is already acceptable from this same way. Hopefully, I can, do, I, can, I can tell you those numbers in a probable possible publication. All right? Thank you for that.